four-stage engine start. The next missions for the Artemis program are receiving a new round of delays. The first crewed mission, Artemis II, is pushing from September 2025 to April 2026. The first crewed landing since Apollo 17 in 1972 now slides from fall 2026 to mid-2027. We need to get this test flight right, this Artemis II test flight right, to ensure the success of our return to the moon and then return safely to Earth in order for the rest of the Artemis campaign to proceed. The announcement of those delays made December 5th comes as NASA is in the early stages of beginning to stack the Space Launch System rocket that will be used on the Artemis II mission. That work being done, of course, here in the Vehicle Assembly Building at the Kennedy Space Center. Now, one of the big reasons for the delays announced is that NASA wanted to get to a better understanding of the root cause of the heat shield issue that came up on the Artemis I mission Orion spacecraft. and why it acted out of character from what they were expecting going into the mission. When the uncrewed Orion spacecraft was coming back to Earth for a splashdown in the Pacific Ocean, it used a technique called skip entry. This method is designed to dissipate energy that builds up during a re-entry from the moon, which is far greater than that seen during a return from low Earth orbit. However, We have since determined that while the capsule was dipping in and out of the atmosphere as part of that planned skip entry, heat accumulated inside the heat shield's outer layer, leading to gases forming and becoming trapped inside the heat shield. This caused internal pressure to build up and led to cracking and uneven shedding of that outer layer. We saw variations in the condition of the heat shield which, in which the char, the char layer that protects Orion um, broke off in ways we did not expect. We observed about 100 spots across the heat shield where that phenomenon occurred. Even though NASA said repeatedly that had there been a crew on board, they would have made it safely back to Earth, the agency wanted to get a more thorough understanding of the root cause of the heat shield anomaly before Artemis II takes off. That work was done by multiple teams across NASA, Lockheed Martin, and other partners. They started with a fault tree assessment uh, that led directly to enabling advances, uh, not just in the understanding of the interactions of the, of the, the vehicle's material loss properties uh, and, and, and its interaction with, with the aerothermal environment, but also invented and innovated new test and non-destructive evaluation techniques for us to able for us to be able to actually observe this phenomenon in real time in the, in the arc jets and the upgrades to the arc jets that we created as part of this investigation. We also use facilities at Wright Patterson Air Force Base and and all over the country to help us um, analyze this phenomenon. Ultimately, the decision made was that they will fly the Artemis II mission with an adjusted trajectory, but use the heat shield that's currently on board Orion. We can either change the material to mitigate the issue, or we can change the environment to mitigate the issue. And for Artemis II, because of the nature of the mission, which right now the mode we're using is equatorial free return, we can safely and with high degrees of success control that entry environment. And so that, that's the plan we're going to proceed along. The safety of our astronauts is always first in our decisions. It is our North Star. We do not fly until we are ready. We do not fly until we are confident that we have made the flight as safe as possible for the humans on board. One of those humans, NASA astronaut Reed Wiseman, said he and his crew were grateful to be kept up to speed during the process. He says they'll use the additional time before launch for more extensive training. We are really going to be digging in now into our integrated simulators. Uh, we've trained out most of our flight profile. We have not yet done ascent and entry training. We're waiting for the latest software load to do those, those training events in the Orion spacecraft. And uh, once we get that done, we've hit all the core training uh, fundamentals that we need. So uh, for us, uh, I would say in about two or three months, we'll really be able to start focusing on that last year prior to launch and getting all the day in the life activities complete. So it's just removal of that unknown with the heat shield now uh, allows us to focus. The December 5th news briefing didn't only revolve around the path to Artemis 2, but also the crewed moon landing with Artemis 3. NASA Associate Administrator Jim Free says all of the components of the Artemis 3 mission, including the crew capsule and service module, are, quote, driving the schedule. Amit Chitria, the Deputy Associate Administrator for NASA's Moon to Mars Program Office, 
went into some detail on the challenges that they're facing with the spacesuits being provided by Axiom Space. It is a very difficult qualification problem and a manufacturing problem, you know, that's very tight. Uh, geometry, the, the reliability standards that are levied on, on a suit like that is really challenging to meet, but, you know, they have some of the, the best experts in the world. A lot of them came from the agency and are helping them internal, and, and also we have uh, tremendous insight there. So they've, they've got some challenges, I think, but, um, you know, so far they've been very open with us about what they need, and we're working with them really well. But getting that life support system done, uh, principally for the suit, and in particular, there are some very unique components um, high pressure oxygen regulators, et cetera, that we, we're really struggling with. Another long pole in the tent is SpaceX's Starship rocket. In order for it to be used as the human landing system on the Artemis 3 mission, it first has to demonstrate its ship to ship propellant transfer. SpaceX's design means it needs to fuel the HLS version of Starship in Earth orbit before it heads to the moon to support either a crewed or uncrewed landing. NASA has been doing some thermal work with SpaceX at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. They're working on improving the ability to prevent propellant boil-off while SpaceX loads the Starship tanker. To me, the propellant transfer flight is, is, is really the most important milestone. I think propellant transfer to me is as important in terms of learnings as, as we had with Artemis 1. So, you know, I consider that to be a major milestone in the program. Uh, right now, they have... Uh, they're on contract to do that here, here early in, in 2025. I know that they're working that really hard. I, I, there is going to be risk to that that delivery, but when we can achieve that propellant transfer milestone, I think we'll have a lot of confidence as to how the rest of it is going to is going to shake out. Of course, they do, as Jim said, have an uncrewed dem demonstration milestone in front of them as well, uh, to, all the way down to the lunar surface. I, I mentioned to you earlier that as we as we started the program, uh, one of the things that we did is we did a kind of integrated assessment of all the risks that we, in the baseline. And in that, even in the uncrewed demonstration milestone, uh, SpaceX and, and, and NASA agreed to add a uh, ascent demonstration from the lunar surface. You know, we've never launched a liquid engine uh, like that off the surface, uh, certainly not one as powerful as Raptor. And, uh, you know, we have to make sure that we can condition the engine, get it chilled in the right way and get it launched. And so that's going to be a, a huge milestone for us as well. During the Artemis 3 mission, Starship will dock with the Orion spacecraft in lunar orbit in order to transfer two astronauts to the lander before heading down to the lunar surface. At the prompting of Administrator Nelson, Chatria announced that they are in the early planning stages of adding a proximity maneuver to the yes, Artemis 2 mission, and that would see the Orion spacecraft approach and communicate with Starship while at the moon. After that, we have to be able to find each other in orbit, you know, proximity operations. Are, are critical, uh, the integration capability. We're working really hard on building more facilities so we can do integrated software testing and ship-to-ship, -ship, live sky testing between Orion and Starship. We're not there yet, so we, if, if, we can, if we have to test it in space, we will, but we need to make sure that we, we, we have really good, um, uh, and robust uh, understanding of how to make sure we can navigate together uh, and then do proximity operations, share states, uh, and then, and of course, we do have on the ground uh, mechanical docking simulators on both sides. So we're pretty confident we can use that to, to, to make sure that we have the right fit up and the connections because the vehicles will not meet um, in, in for the, they will meet for the first time in space. But but their docking adapters and their interfaces will meet before that to make sure we, we have that licked. But that, that whole integrated operation, all of us who watch Space Station and all the other all the other operations that are like that, it's very, very uh, sophisticated and there's a lot of things that can go wrong. And so the, the sooner we can test that even in, in, in simulated tests on the ground or with, with uh, you know, ground to ground test assets, the better. But the, the best test for us would be to get, get uphill, both, both vehicles get uphill and, and fly by each other, maybe even fly together uh, as soon as we can. As NASA looks towards its goals for 2025, Chatria says a key focus will be continuing to work on the life support systems within the Orion spacecraft. That work is being done at the Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout Facility at the Kennedy Space Center. So we're continuing to characterize and learn and test that life support system, but it is taking us a, a longer than we thought. And so we need to, we need to get that done. And uh, we, we're making excellent progress there to the point at which now we're ready, as, as we said, to commit to, 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 commit to stacking. So going forward, uh, that additional time that we have um, to, you know, to, that we need to, to, to get the vehicle ready and to, and to get the stack moving, we're going to take that time to consider how to make the mission more robust. With stacking of the Space Launch System rocket for the Artemis II mission underway, 
NASA says they should be able to get the full integrated vehicle assembled in about three or four months, but cautions that timeline is also subject to change. Reporting from the Kennedy Space Center, for Spaceflight Now, I'm Will Robinson-Smith.